Welcome back, everybody. It's Mr. Scary Muffin, and uh, here's another thoughts talk at TF2. <laughs> um, so recently, I've been uh, not feeling the multiplayer as much as I used to. I mean, uh, I went through a little bit of a period where I was like, yeah, Minecraft, and I, I did a lot of work on the Ground Fox server, etc., etc. Did some TF2 and kind of stuff like that, but um, I kind of mellowed out, drained out a little bit, uh, and right now I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot of single player and campaign and story mode kind of stuff. I mean, I'm feeling a lot of I'm feeling a lot of just one time playthrough games actually. And recently I played a adventure map with Meteor Freak and I really really enjoyed it. I had lots of fun playing it. I had lots of fun cheating the game too. So there was, there was also that. But afterwards I also I got this urge and I want you know what? I want to see what games I have that I can do kind of the same thing where is playing through the story more it has a very clear beginning and end has a fairly linear gameplay and uh, basically I mean those of you guys uh, know me I, I talked about the evergreen formula you know things with multiplayer and lots of updates lots and lots of replay value huge amount of replay value uh, and one of the things that I never really I don't really like is games that you play once and you're done. You, you drop like $50 to buy a game, you play through the campaign mode and then you're done. On to the next game. And that never seemed worth it to me as a gamer, especially since a lot of things that I enjoy, I basically put uh, not that much money into and I've been able to milk it for a lot of enjoyment, a lot of hours played, right? But there is something to be said for these single player games. Maybe not $50, we're saying, but I'm I'm eyeing the uh, the Tomb Raider game, the, the 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 rebooted Tomb Raider game. It's going for like 20 bucks or something like that. And I've seen people play it. I know I will like the game a lot, um, but I still haven't I haven't bit the bullet. I'm waiting for maybe when Tomb Raider 2 comes out and it'll go on a sale or something. Maybe I'll pick it up then. And not to mention they have like the uh, the 30 dollar version of the game, the Game of the Year edition with all the DLCs and stuff like that. So I don't know. I've been looking at that and I just like I'm, I'm, I would really enjoy this game. Not only just playing through it once but maybe playing through it multiple times doing different things or even just exploring the game and just finding all the secrets and it really just seems really appealing to me for some for whatever reason I'm also tempted to download a couple of more uh, adventure maps and maybe just play them on by myself uh, going through various different things maybe not CTMs because CTMs sometimes uh, don't aren't that super fun but so here's the argument right uh, single play through games seem to me to be kind of the opposite of the evergreen and it really is the opposite of evergreen they're a one time playthrough but they have a niche in uh, the market for sure because some people really like having a clear succinct beginning and end even open world games like Grand Theft Auto still has their own story that you can finish and you don't feel obligated you don't start this game and go like well I have way too much to do and it's so daunting the task of doing everything that you just don't do it at all I, I think that's one of the reasons why Minecraft doesn't always get picked up by some people they'll look at it and they go like all right so what do I do and then like you do anything you want and that's a little bit too open world for some people and they, they like some guidance they like to know where they begin where they end and when they know they are done with the game some people want to feel that sense of um, accomplishment and, and completion and there is a market for that kind of stuff and I think there's other things about it uh, about these single playthrough games that make them equally uh, as appealing as my evergreen formula um, a lot of times these new games because they are essentially one-time playthrough they can control the players experience very well um, they can decide exactly how hard a challenge is at certain points they can decide um, the storylines that you give like one of the big things I think about single player for, for sure is the story and we'll go back to that later but I want to talk about um, being able to control what the player can do. So you can control what kind of upgrades they have at certain points, what kind of enemies they face at certain points. Uh, one of those things that I can, I can think of is, for example, in uh, Legend of Zelda, where you might face a difficult opponent like a Dark Nut at an early stage, and they are friggin' hard, if not impossible, to beat, simply because you don't have the tools or the heart or the, even the experience to beat them. But later on in the game, you can fight like three of them at the same time and you would just lay them to waste 
and you feel really really accomplished and you just uh it, it feels really good for the player because they remember that first time, that very f hard, difficult first time. And from E3, actually, we even see something similar to that where we have the the troll from the Fable, uh, the, the F Fable remake, uh, the four-player edition. You, you, they fight a troll, and after they beat that one troll, there's like three more trolls that come out immediately. But the idea is, is that now you know how to beat them, trying a couple more on for size kind of thing. Uh, and so that's something that's that you don't really get in open world games simply because it's really hard to control wh where the player is going because, uh, without sacrificing some of the open worldness of your game. And it'll be really interesting to see how the new Zelda that's coming out next year or the year after uh, for the Wii U, how the new Zelda that's purportedly supposed to be open world, how they're going to handle that. Um, the, if they're going to base it kind of like on the original Zelda, the original Zelda basically uh, the world just got really really difficult in certain areas and you just keep dying and you basically have to uh, not go there in, in certain directions if you want to actually uh, survive but you can get stuck in weird places and uh, but if you tackle the dungeons in correct order they roughly are the correct challenges uh, so they control the gameplay basically just by making everything hard if you're not supposed to be there basically um, but yeah open world games don't really have a easy way of controlling player stuff and sometimes the game gets ridiculous and frustrating and stuff like that whereas other times uh, it's just so super easy because you just did things not in the correct order and yeah that's why one of the reasons why single players have a stronger ability just being able to control where people go um, so story we have uh, single player is definitely very strong in the story with the cutscenes and all that kind of stuff and this is something that you won't get in pure multiplayer games, things like TF2, things like Minecraft even, you don't really get that. Um, you might get that a little bit in Left 4 Dead, but Left 4 Dead <clears throat> playing it multiplayer like on versus mode is definitely very different than playing it uh, in a, like by yourself or with just a group of friends doing co-op. But yeah, story, like one of the things I remember was Final Fantasy IX and how much I loved the story in Final Fantasy, even though I wasn't playing it, I was willing to watch somebody else play it and then get the story. Um, one of the reasons why this is not as strong an argument for me uh, for single player games is simply because Let's Plays have been such a huge thing these days. And for example, Watch Dogs, I'm not going to buy Watch Dogs. I might not even ever play Watch Dogs, but I like watching people play it. I like watching their reactions to the story. I like, I like that extra factor. Uh, of not only seeing the story, but seeing other people's reaction stories. It makes you feel kind of vindicated. It's like watching a show or a movie with another person kind of thing. And you get the storyline because, you know, before Let's Plays, video games have been fairly solitary um, endeavors. Like, you play a game and you get the experience of the story, but, and you get to talk with friends about it afterwards, but you never really watch, like, somebody's reaction live on camera kind of and that's one of the things I really like about Let's Plays, is being able to see people react to uh, not only a certain story elements but also just like certain things in the game period is also really great um, but yeah those are the kind of things that I feel make single player games uh, or single run through games campaign story games whatever uh, kind of appealing sometimes and I, it really depends on your mood I suppose I think I know some people really really prefer one or the other and for a long time I was that way too where I really like just my multiplayer games I've been like that for five 10 years even, uh, where I just prefer multiplayer games because I like interacting with other people. But recently, I think given that my game time, gaming time has not been as much, I, I kind of almost want to feel uh, something that has a clear beginning and end. And I like to play against the computer as opposed to other people sometimes. Just because playing against other people when you don't have time to practice is very hard and you, you get very frustrated very quickly because you just can't beat other people very easily. Uh, sometimes and then beating computer you can always just switch to easy mode and just have a good time of it so there's also that um, if you are a bad gamer like me <laughs> anyways guys uh, let me know which one do you guys prefer story mode or multiplayer stuff again if you guys want to see uh, more TF2 stuff there is the DSGL that is still running I'll be streaming it whenever they are on and I am available mostly uh, during the weekdays at 8 p.m. Pacific time uh, so catch on those or go to DuckSoupGaming.com forums to see what the exact times are. Uh, anyways, I will see you guys next time. Thank you all so much for listening. And, uh, until then, take care, guys. Have a good time. Bye.